Hi, I'm Larry Peterson, WA9TT. In this video, we will cover how radio waves travel through the air. Some people think the whole idea of radio waves is magic. Even though we can't really see radio waves, we often show them as a series of rippled lines like this. Radio waves actually move. They move at the speed of light. Well, just how fast is the speed of light? It is 186,000 miles per second. The simplest form of radio wave travel is called line of sight. You will learn later that radio waves called very high frequency and higher depend pretty much on line of sight. As shown here, Someone transmitting radio waves from their location to yours is simply a matter of sending the signal straight across. This works well unless there is something in the way of the line of sight signal, such as a small mountain. That's why you will often see antennas on hilltops so that their line of sight signal will travel farther even if there are no mountains in the way of your line of sight signal, the curve of the earth will eventually make it impossible for the signal to reach someone far enough around the curve. Line of sight signals can bend a little, but not for long distances. That's where other forms of wireless radio come into play. Consider four cities lying along the curvature of the earth. San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, and New York City. We've already talked about line of sight radio waves, and we know they pretty much can't follow the curve of the Earth. Even some transmitters designed to send radio waves around the Earth will throw off some ground waves that won't go very far. This is where the ionosphere comes in. The ionosphere is in an interesting invisible cloud of charged particles that surrounds the whole Earth. This is one of the most interesting parts of radio because it has many effects on radio waves. If I'm in San Francisco, my transmitter and antenna will throw off radio waves at an angle up into the sky. When my signal enters the ionosphere, the radio waves bend back down toward the Earth as if they were being reflected off of a mirror. While the ionosphere isn't exactly a mirror, it does have a similar effect. My radio waves come back down to Earth at approximately the same angle they enter the ionosphere and can be detected by someone listening on my frequency near where the waves get close to the ground. We call this reflection off the ionosphere skip and the total up and down distance is called skip zone. Well, what about the people in Denver? People listening on my frequency in Denver cannot hear my signal because it has skipped over them. We call this area where a signal skips over the skip zone. After the first skip of my signal, it will reflect off of the earth and head back towards the ionosphere. This is then reflected again off the ionosphere, heading back towards the earth. And here we show that it hits somewhere near New York City, where someone is listening in. We call this the second hop or second skip of my signal. My signal has gone all the way from San Francisco to New York. Not at all possible with line of sight or ground waves. And with a second hop, there is a second skip zone. In this case, no one in Chicago will hear my signal because it's traveling too high for their antenna to detect. The total of both hops is called the second hop skip distance. There are two other interesting things that can happen with skip. Let's say I position my antenna in such a way as to lower the angle my radio waves travel to the ionosphere. Then they will reflect back down at a lower angle, making them go much farther like I'm showing in the next red lines. Now my first skip hop got my small signal all the way to Chicago, while on the first try, it didn't go quite as far. 
And on the second hop, the signal travels over New York City to somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Who knows? Maybe a tropical island. Finally, I might position my antenna so that the radio waves angle up too sharply, too high. They will deflect a bit, but they will end up going right through the ionosphere into space. No one will hear them, except maybe an alien or possibly an astronaut. Now let's look at what really is amazing. This skip effect can take a radio wave signal all the way around to the other side of the Earth. What's really crazy, signals can sometimes skip their way completely around the Earth, and I'm able to hear my own signal. At 186,000 miles per second, how long do you think it would take my signal to make one run around the Earth? Well, there's 25,000 miles around the Earth. Take 25,000 divided by 186,000, and we have 0.134 seconds, or a little more than one-tenth of a second. Now you have a basic understanding of how radio waves travel. Pause your YouTube video at this point and turn to page two in your Radio Merit Badge workbook. Take a few minutes now to sketch diagrams showing how radio waves travel locally by line of sight or maybe ground waves and how they travel around the world with the help of the ionosphere. When you have completed this exercise, restart the video to learn about WWB and how it provides a national time standard. What exactly is WWV? WWV is the radio call sign of the United States National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. The radio station is near Fort Collins, Colorado. WWV uses high performance antennas to continuously transmit its signals and can be heard all over the world. They transmit simultaneously on several frequencies. Their frequencies and time signals are controlled by atomic clocks located in Boulder, Colorado. NIST also operates the very similar radio station WWVH in Kauai, Hawaii, using the same frequencies. WWV and WWVH make recorded announcements. Since they share the same frequencies, WWV uses a male voice to distinguish itself from WWVH, which uses a female voice. They also make other recorded announcements of general interest. For example, the GPS, satellite constellation status, and severe oceanic weather warnings. Now let's take a minute to listen to a WWV recorded transmission. At the tone, nine hours, zero minutes, coordinated universal time. National Institute of Standards and Technology time. This is radio station WWV, Fort Collins, Colorado, broadcasting on internationally allocated standard carrier frequencies of 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz, providing time of day, standard time interval, and other related information. Inquiries regarding these transmissions may be directed to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, radio station WWV, 2000 East County Road 58. Fort Collins, Colorado, 80524. Now, before proceeding to the next slide about DX, turn to page two of your workbook and complete the exercise about WWV. Can you guess what the abbreviation DX means? DX is shorthand for distance. There's no exact amount of distance defined for DX, but we say DX communication is over great distances 
using the ionosphere to reflect the transmitted radio signal. DXing is the pursuit of distant stations with the goal of earning various awards. A de-expedition is a trip to operate in a rare DXCC entity, such as one to Scarborough Reef in the South China Sea. DXCC is the DX Century Club. This is an award ham radio operators earn for working 100 different countries. Now pause your video and turn to page two of your workbook. Complete the exercise about DX. Because radio has no boundaries, that is, radio waves don't stop at country borders, the countries of the free world get together and make formal agreements on how radio should be used. It is up to each country to create their own laws which ensure they abide by the international agreements. A formal international group has been created to coordinate the agreements between countries. This international group is called the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU. The ITU coordinates the agreements in the form of treaties between countries and has its headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. The agency in the U.S. government which creates and enforces law to help us fulfill the international treaties is called the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. Nearly all who transmit radio signals for any purpose are required to be registered and licensed by the FCC. The FCC is the agency that assigns those call signs we talked about earlier in Requirement 1. Now please turn back to page 3 in your workbook and complete the questions about the FCC and the ITU. This will then complete Requirement 2 for the Radio Merit Badge.